Beware, beware, the daughter of the sea. Hello, sailors and sad sacks. My name is TBS Guy, and uh, this animated teaser for the upcoming Battle for Azeroth expansion for War World of Warcraft dropped on YouTube yesterday. And since then, I've gotten like a number of comments from people who want me to do one of my typical animation breakdown videos on it and, and talk a little bit about what's going on there. Now, there's a couple of problems with that. As perhaps you might have remembered from the last time I talked about anything related to World of Warcraft, I am not up on my Warcraft lore. Like, the last time I played a Warcraft game was Warcraft 3, and th since then, I, I never touched World of Warcraft, I never got into it, I was never really interested in MMOs back then, and I, to be honest, I st I'm still not. And so, like, all of the lore, all of the characters, like, I, in prep, because people asked me to talk about this video, I went on Wowpedia just to kind of try and catch up on what's been happening in Azeroth since I left. And it's like, no, that's not happening. This, because the hundreds and hundreds of pages of just things that have happened. Good lord, how many people are dead? I don't even know, I couldn't count. Anyway, I have no idea what the state of the lore is in Azeroth right now, except that the Horde and the Alliance are fighting again because of some reasons. And I think the Burning Legion is gone, except not gone, I'm not even gonna try. Anyway, <laughs> all of this to say, if you were looking for a lore breakdown or any kind of commentary on the story that's being presented in this short, I, I'm not really the right guy to do that because, like, I, I do know that what's happening here is a is a continuation or a, or, or um, kind of a follow up on some stuff that happened in Warcraft Three, specifically, where after the founding of the Orc nations in Kalimdor, I think is the, is, what, is what the new continent is called. A navy arrives from across the sea, led by Jaina's father, Admiral Proudmore, who is just like, he's like, he arrives and he's just like Captain Racist of the USS Genocide. Like, he's just an absolutely awful, terrible dude who wants to murder all of the people. And so he kind of has to die. And Jaina makes the decision to let him die. And she feels sad about that. But then that's not, there's not a ton of follow up on that as far as I remember. But now it seems to be, that seems to be. As presented by this animated short, that seems to be the center of um, of Jaina's internal emotional conflict here. And the center of her character development is that she has reevaluated her father's legacy, as it were, or she has been consumed at least with some kind of doubt or some kind of guilt over his death. And so now she's attempting to make things right. Like it, it, it has a line in there about as. We have Admiral Th Theramore, uh, Admiral Probmore. Presumably, it's his ghost. I'm listening now, Father. Is her line, and the whole thing is is, is structured around a, a sea shanty that Jaina begins, which then becomes orchestral, and when that, which then fades back out to Jaina's voice at the end after she has raised a, a ship from the bottom of the sea. Like she's literally physically reviving a vessel that was sunk, a ghost ship that she's raising up, reviving a ghost of the past and taking her place as captain of that vessel. And if I were to take a guess at exactly which boat it is she has pulled up, I would imagine that it's probably her father's flagship, because that's very much the, the narrative that's being presented here, is a daughter kind of coming back to her father's legacy and trying to make things right, or at least trying to come to terms with some of her feelings about mm, the father who she very much did leave to die. And so, there really isn't a lot of animation to speak of in this short. I think that's fair to say. This is not so much an animated short as it is... It's an animated slideshow. And I don't mean that derisively. Like, I really, I'm really not of the opinion that the quality of animation comes down to how many frames of animation you have. I think it comes down to what you do with them. And Blizzard, being Blizzard as usual, have done a really quality job with the things that they're given. Now, I would imagine that the tech that's underlying what's going on in these shorts is probably very similar to the kind of technology that uh, Riot Games used to animate their lock-in screens, or something close to it, because you can see, essentially, the animation that happens in these shorts, like, as limited as it is, it's essentially a matter of moving various aspects of the image in, in layers and just deforming them and you know, resizing them and adding effects on top of it. And that kind of gets you an affectation of a, of a level of movement. And it has a kind of interesting effect because with stuff like, for instance, the boat gliding across the surface, you have this very smooth motion, the same thing with the ghosts that are haunting her. But with character movement, 
you can see they just kind of fade from one frame to another whenever she needs to change her express expression, whenever she needs to move. They don't kind of slide her across the ground in the same way that they just let the boat kind of float across the water. They they cut from one frame to the other in a kind of, 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 of fade out version of, of a slideshow. And it's honestly, it's very effective. And this is this is a great demonstration of something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while, which, like, like I said, it's not the number of frames you have that determines the quality of your animation. It's how well you can use the frames that are available to you to tell an interesting and compelling story. And one of the clever tr tricks they do for transitions, like for instance here, um, something I quite liked is the way that they use, you can see as the ghost runs out of frame, take a look what happens. The wave comes up, boom. And then they use that wave as an excuse to cut, like it's 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 an excuse to change the perspective, which has been very very focused up until this point. It's been very tightly focused, primarily on Jaina's perspective. It's been very close to her, but then at the moment when the ghost kind of takes control of the story, it 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 literally drags the camera with it as it moves. Boom! The sea rushes in and takes control of the narrative, right? So the story is now not about just Jaina anymore. It's about the sea, the enormous sea, and all of the ghosts and corpses that are hidden there, all of the history which, to which she is subject. And you can kind of see it happening in the composition here that this, this is very, very, very big. This is very large, and she is very, very small. And the ocean, like, there's a, there's a peak of a wave, like, up here, and she's down here. So the frame... And this is, again, it's about how well you use the frame. And th so this frame is communicating to us that the ghosts of the past that she's chasing, that history, is dwarfing her. It's overwhelming her. It's much stronger. It's much bigger than her. And she's just a tiny little piece of it, a tiny little human trying to reckon with something big and powerful. And you can see they kind of do it again here with the wave transition that's about to come in from the right. See? As we move along. There we go. Boom. Using that as another excuse to kind of cut... And we come back down to Jaina's perspective and we can kind of see, yeah, she feels pretty overwhelmed by this as well. And this is, again, it's about how well you use the frame. And there's a really good expression going on here because it has this kind of complicated mixture of sorrow and wonder and humility. Like this, this is not the expression of someone who's arrogant or feels particularly in control of what's happening right now. This is someone who's kind of taking in what's going on and being transported, you can see we get transported into kind of her fantasy, her memories of what happened. And here again, it's about how well you use the frame. Take a look at here we have Proudmoore himself, the Admiral, who's framed as this very tiny figure standing heroically against literal mountain-sized orcs with glowing red eyes and just sort of deeply impersonal faces that just look evil. And this, by the way, is a historical revisionism, as indeed we remember what proud Admiral Proudmore did was he went to Kalimdor with a giant motherfucking army on a mission of extermination. Like, he came to murder all of them. But that's not the past that Jaina is remembering. The past that Jaina is remembering, the past that she's understanding, is one of a lone man standing overwhelmed against legions of very evil, very bad, very dark enemies. And... This is also a manifestation of her guilt for abandoning him. And you can see it here in this kind of hagiography where we have Admiral Proudmore as the brave lone fighter standing against a horde of enemies coming upon him. And we can also see that in the lyrics, like when he faced those savage foes, la di la di la da. And all the time we have this this hagiography going on, this, this, uh, this martyrdom for the Admiral that's happening inside of Jaina's mind, which is being communicated to us just through the cinematography, right? Because imagine how different this scene would have been if Proudmore was the same size as the orcs, like if they were not overwhelming, or if it had been Proudmore with an army against an army of orcs, then we would have this equal clash between, you know, between combatants that have some kind of chance against each other. And that would be a very different narrative. That would be a very different way to remember things. But that's not what she remembers. What she remembers is her father alone in desperate need of help against an overwhelming enemy. Again, tying back into her guilt for abandoning him. And it's the same thing here. Like, if an army of humans fighting against the orcs had been present in this image, then we would have been presented with an image of equals fighting for control, right? A, a contest of equals where anyone could have won. 
and it would be kind of more okay not to rush to his side to defend him, but here he is alone, bravely standing upon a mountain of defeated enemies, you know, literally being overpowered. Like, he's below the orc is above, classic symbol of dominance in, in, in filmic language. And then finally, this image, which I quite like, because notice something? He's not getting stabbed from the front. He's literally getting stabbed in the back as the lyrics go, his daughter stood aside. So there's a connection there between her standing aside and him getting stabbed in the back, i.e. she betrayed him. And this, again, remember, is all happening inside Jaina's mind. This is how she's feeling about the situation. That she betrayed him by standing aside. That spear is not from an orc, as we saw, you know, in, in, in the lineup of, of the stuff that's going on here. That was an axe the orc was wielding. No, the spear, that is Jaina. <laughs> that, is, that is her spear stabbing him in the back. And we can see it again here. As the sky opens up, this, like, these are martyr saints being anointed in the light of heaven. That's, that's very much the imagery that's going on here. This is like Simba's father appearing in the sky. Remember who you are. And it's just like, from a visual storytelling perspective, it is so gaudy. Like, it's so not subtle at all, but it kind of doesn't need to be because here we are in the realm of feelings. We're not in the realm of fact. We're not in the realm of thinking rationally or reasonably about things. You can kind of see it here that Jaina is not even looking. She's blind, right? That's that's kind of, that's also a thing that's, that's quite uh, interesting to look at later on in, into the short is... Jaina spends quite a lot of time during this sequence with her eyes literally closed, with her eyes closed perhaps to the truth. That is certainly, like, something I mentioned before is that the most common way in film language, or indeed in visual language, to show that a character is not seeing the truth is to somehow blind them. Like, to put a blindfold over their face or to, like, cover their eyes with something, which is part of the reason, by the way, why she's wearing this hood, is also to kind of indicate that she's being shadowed by something, that, that she's having something pulled over her eyes, that she's not seeing things clearly, is to have a character be literally hooded is another thing that, that can serve as a visual signifier for that kind of thing. But Jaina, like, even see here when she opens her eyes with the glowing, that gets referred back to in this shot that's coming up right here. See? The moment she's not using her magic, eyes go back to closed. So yeah, it's from a from just a film language perspective, it's just it's it's not subtle, but it's very, very effective. And here again we can see the dwarfing, right? The crest of Admiral Proudmoore just absolutely dwarfing her in every way possible. She is this tiny insignificant speck when measured against the enormity of her father's legacy, of her father's spirit, of her father's betrayal. Jaina is feeling incredibly small. And even in those points in the in the shot where she gets to be a large figure, see for instance here, as we close in on her, Jaina is a large figure, but around her, she's dwarfed. Like once again, she is a very small figure receiving a kind of, of blessing from the faces of the dead sailors for whose, whose deaths she feels responsible to, but also overwhelmed by them, overpowered by them. They are literally looking down on her, right? That's very much the feeling that she has here, is that she's being judged. She's in this circle of them, and like, look at the expressions on their faces as they look at her. This is, they're not like being, hey, the daughter of our admiral, it's so nice to see you. It's kind of more like, yeah, we're pretty much fucking judging you because like you're the reason we're down here rotting at the bottom of the sea, and like my bones got taken away by a crab. That's your fault. My damn bones, honestly. And I do, I do enjoy that. Like that's really the thing I enjoy about animated shorts like these. And this is also something we talked about in the previous video when we were talking about um, limited 3D animation. Like when you do animation with very intentionally limited frame rates. One of the things I like is that that allows each individual frame to have more impact time. It, it allows the individual frame to do more work. And for me, that's something I, I quite enjoy. And that's this is kind of the ultimate expression of that. The ultimate expression of letting every individual frame tell as much of the story as possible. Because the scene that we've got here in this shot as Jaina is raising the ship is that this enormous titanic hulk of a vessel is being raised out of the ocean, but since we can't really animate that correctly, properly, what do we do instead? Well, we use very limited little effects. You can see that just, just 
tiny little bit of movement on the water droplets falling down from the ship so that we get this sensation of watching the thing happen in slow motion. Um, and the, the, the artist uses just the way that the water is cascading down the side of the ship to imply motion where motion doesn't exist. This is a, this is a technique you'd use in a comic book as well, by the way. Um, and, but here in motion, along with the camera shake, along with obviously the sound of the thing, which I'm not playing because I'm worried that that's going to trigger a content ID and plus it would just be distracting to hear all that beautiful singing when I'm sitting here trying to talk in my, you know, not quite as beautiful a voice. And you can see something I noticed this is a uh, take a look at uh, the the juxtaposition that happens here. The first female figure we see as the ship comes into frame is this harpy, this screaming banshee at the front, this you no know, vengeful figurehead. And Jaina still is in the shadow of the ship. Like she's 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 here. She's important. She's being framed, but this is the woman that's in charge. The Banshee, the the vengeful angel coming to, you know, reckon with the legacy of those who she sees as the betrayers of her father. And she's still framed by the ship, even as we close in, even as we close in. And finally, finally, when she accepts this, like when she does, when she has this look on her face, when she finally accepts her father's legacy fully or accepts that she needs to take some kind of revenge for him. Like, again, I should be clear. I don't really know what the hell Jaina is up to in, in Battle for Azeroth. I'm just kind of extrapolating based on what I know from Warcraft 3 and what this short is telling me. Finally, once she commits fully to her father's legacy, now Jaina gets to be dominant. For the first time in a very long time, she gets to be truly dominant in a frame. The boat fades out, becomes indistinct and unclear, and she becomes the only clear thing, the only sharp thing in the image. And then the final shot is just murder eyes all the way across the world. And that's really, that's really quite good. I also do, again, speaking of not subtle at all, a graveyard of cutlasses <laughs> and swords. Wow, that's, you, you could, you could be more subtle about it, Blizzard, like seriously. But no, she's sitting in a literal graveyard of warriors who have been abandoned to their death. And that's the source of her grief. Anyway, I think that's about as much as I can say about this thing. Like, again, there really isn't much to Oh, right, too. I actually forgot one of the things I wanted to talk about. I was almost about to end the video. One of the things I wanted to talk about is what's the advantage to doing this rather than doing this? Well, budget, first of all. It's a lot cheaper to make one of these than it is to make one of these. It also requires a hell of a lot less manpower. It also requires a hell of a lot fewer man hours. And... My understanding is that they're planning to put out three of these. And while it would have been awesome, I do enjoy, I do adore Blizzard's fully animated shorts. That would probably have been a little bit more expense than Blizzard is willing to spend. And also a lot more just time that they would have to spend putting these things together. These are hella expensive and they're also difficult to get right. Like this, making a short like this is a very different thing from a directorial perspective from like from an animation direct direction perspective and just from a production perspective than making something like this because um something like this rather because theoretically a few artists and a director could make something like this like they've probably got like dozens and dozens and dozens of people working on these i i would not be surprised because it is blizzard they have all of the money but something th to the level of this can be created by a relatively small team, which also allows, from a structural perspective, it allows for not so much of too many cooks, uh, which is a thing that can kind of happen on big productions is that with a hell of a lot of interests aligned with the thing and a hell of a lot of people involved with it, my experience is that the more people you get involved into a production, the more it tends to kind of fold towards a middle ground, like the fewer chances it tends to take, the fewer, you know, interesting decisions it tends to make and my feeling at least is that this thing is as an artistic experiment is a lot more daring it's a lot more interesting it's a lot more visually distinct than something like this which gorgeous as all of blizzard's animation always is does look like a fantasy short like your standard high fantasy short film with a couple of armies fighting and there's some magic and some people are dying and stuff and, and shit is going on 
not a lot of emotional content, not a lot of thematic storytelling going on. It's also because they're doing very different things. This is a character piece while this is setting the stage for, you know, the grand central conflict of the narrative. But generally speaking, when you have fewer people working on a production, when you have fewer stakeholders, when you have less investment of time and resources, you can take more risks. And it'll be okay, because even if the Jaina short hadn't been good, have I called her Jana a million times? I feel like I might have called her Jana a million times. Jana short. Even if this short hadn't been good, well, they've got two more coming on. Like, they have small teams working on these things. They can put them out with relative alacrity. If one doesn't work, the other two can kind of cover for it. So, from a structural perspective, I think it just gives you a little bit more artistic freedom. And then also, a shot like this, I really do feel like this would have been a lot harder to make work as a piece of 3D animation. Like, I really feel like if these had been 3D models and these birds had been flapping and the orcs had been kind of moving and sort of doing staring things, or even if it just had been obvious that this is three-dimensional uh, character models in the shot rather than what is obviously painted like that's the thing about the orcs here I'm gonna close in a little bit more they are obviously painted right and the same thing goes for the birds you can see they're just they're they're painted color blobs they're barely even finished they look kind of sketchy literally they look like sketches which is which gives them a certain effect because again we're inside Jaina's mind space here right she's sketching out what's happening she's sketching out that past that she's remembering it's not real it's not set in stone you can replicate that in 3d but i feel like it works better in 2d like i feel like this whole this whole narrative where every image is supposed to be so important works better in in 3d but yeah was there anything else i think there was something else but i keep forgetting what it is so unless i remember it very shortly yeah, I've forgotten it. Doesn't matter. Anyway, my name is Pintv Khan. If you feel like you enjoyed this video, then I would be very much obliged if you clicked the like button down below. If you want to see more of these videos, you can tell me so down in the comments. And if you happen to have a dollar uh, that you would not mind parting with once a month and help me pay for... I don't know what I can buy with one dollar. Not a lot. You can't really buy anything with one dollar, but if I get one dollar from you and then some other people also give one dollar, then, then eventually... It kind of adds up and I can pay for my rent, which is nice. Uh, so if you are able and willing to do that, I, I would be very grateful. If you are not, that is, of course, completely okay. Finally, if you didn't like the video, I it's not a lot I can do about that. I just, I just have to tell you that there's a dislike button down below that you can click on, but I can't 100% guarantee you that that dislike button is not consumed um, with traumatic memories from its past, which are currently haunting it in a terrible and deeply personal way. And if you click it, I cannot guarantee that it is not going to start resurrecting the dead uh, in some sort of vain attempt to make up for mistakes that it made in its past. Uh, so it's just, if you hear it wailing, or screaming or like crying in the night or something, you might want to consider just, just not clicking it. it. It might not be worth it. Unless you're a cleric, in which case, I guess you'll be fine. Thank you very much for watching.